Welcome to More Fanime. I am your fan of More Anime, and today we will be reviewing the first 31 chapters of the Dressarosa arc. Am I saying that right? <laughs> or Dressarosa, I believe. Um, this is chapter 700 to 731. This is the biggest arc in One Piece so far that I can remember. Over 100 chapters, so please forgive me for breaking this bad boy up. I was told to stop at 731, and boy do I know why. <laughs> Let's just say I really enjoyed this first part of Dressarosa. Oh my god. Who would have thought? <laughs> I... <n> <laughs> This arc is very reminiscent of the uh, Alabasta arc in a lot of ways. Uh, it reminds me a lot. There's the, the princess, I think her name's Rebecca, the gladiator lady. And then it that kind of reminds me of Vivi from Alabasta, a, a less cool version of Vivi. Uh, maybe just not as developed yet. I, I'll find out later. Uh, I'm not done with the arc yet, so I don't want to judge her too hard just yet. Uh, she's a pretty girl, but she doesn't really have a whole lot of depth that I felt with Vivi. Uh, maybe it's because it was so early on in the story. I don't know. But either way, I, I really am enjoying this arc a lot. And a lot of shit happens. Like, a lot. Like, there's a tournament in this arc. That's insane. So, if you don't know... In most jump Shonen Jump uh, properties, Naruto, uh, Dragon Ball, for example, uh, Black Clover, there's always a tournament. Or even look at My Hero Academia. They couldn't go. They they didn't wait until the the literally the beginning of the second season in My Hero Academia is a tournament arc. You know why? Because tournament arcs are sick as fuck, but they are kind of a cop out. And you see them a lot because of how popular they are, uh, probably thanks to the Dragon Ball series. Um, not sure. Or the Dark Tournament from Yu Yu Hakusho, arguably one of the best tournaments of all time. But One Piece, Oda, decided to wait 700 chapters before he did a tournament. And it's so exciting to me to think about th those kind of things. Like, how do you hold off 700 chapters? Oda could have easily filled some, some time with a tournament at any point during this series. And he held off. Maybe because, because he's got so many great ideas. He's like, I don't have time for a tournament, man. I got so much shit I need to unveil and and reveal. Like, I don't have time to do a tournament arc. But he did here, baby. And you, it's actually really cool. I like the idea of battle royals. And they were like big battle royals with over a hundred contestants in each one. And the final, I'm assuming, we haven't got to the end of the battle royal portion of the tournament, but I'm assuming the four will then face each other in another type of battle, like a, four, a fatal four-way type fight. Or they'll fight each other in a tournament bracket style where two face each other and, the, or, and then the other, and then the finalists face each other in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Uh, but I'm assuming it's going to be a fatal four-way. I don't know for sure. But man, uh, I would say my only disappointing moment so far in this tournament isn't really a moment in the tournament. It was really just the way it was laid out. I feel bad uh, that Zoro wasn't in this tournament or Sanji, like, or someone else from the crew. Like, I was really hope it would have been really cool to see Zoro in this tournament, even during this arc. In the first 31 chapters, Zoro sees Luffy in this tournament, and he's like, what the hell? He knew there was a tournament, and he didn't invite me? Gosh, wouldn't it have been sick? Oh! Oh my god, it makes me think about 
when Zoro and Luffy fought each other at Whiskey Peak for literally no good reason, uh, and they wasted that moment, it could have happened here. Like, Zoro and Luffy could have accidentally ended up in the same block together, and they're like, well, let's just fight each other. The best man win. I don't know. Oh, man! Oh, my God. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. That's just one thing that I was like, man, I wish Zoro was in this tournament or, or Sanji because they are bad-ish. Uh, even Frankie would have been cool in this tournament. I mean, he doesn't... I mean, a lot of the Straw Hats kind of got benched during these first 31 chapters. Like, Brooke, Chopper, and Nami all ended up doing... a. Uh, watch the ship duty, basically, which is kind of redonk, but I guess somebody's got to do it. I kind of like that aspect, though, that's, you can't always bring the entire crew onto a new island, because, uh, you have to have somebody watch the ship. One, because somebody could steal your effing ship, and you've got a badass ship with a thousand sunny. Two, because, uh, someone's got to steer the fucking boat. Someone's got to take care of the ship. Uh, and I like it because it splits the crew up. It forces the crew to split up in one way, shape, or form. There have been times where they leave the ship behind, usually uh, not on purpose. Usually they they either have to go rescue somebody or they get kidnapped from their ship or some shit, like at Bunk Hazard. But um, it is cool that they have to leave people behind. But I felt bad for Brooke, Nami, and Chopper. Uh, and it's kind of weird too. Cause like, you know, every time they get left behind, they're like, well, who's going to protect us? Like Nami or Chopper or Usopp, like who's going to protect us? And you're like, come on, you guys spent two years training Chopper. You can turn into a literal monster. Brooke is very fast. Uh, uh, I mean, I really would like to know how fast Brooke is because when he does that notch slash thing where he walks by his opponent and then puts the sword away and then they fall down, he's like, oh, by the way, I, I already cut you. Like, he's got to be light speed. I mean, something. Uh, and then Nami can literally control the weather. Ah! But they get benched and they have to deal with this lady that's in the... Uh, uh, who's on Doflamingo's crew, who has, like, the art art fruit or something, and she turns them into art. And it's this whole ordeal. She real Maybe later in this arc she's going to be a big deal, but I really didn't like her character at all. My favorite part of that whole thing was Brooke pretending to be on her side and then getting her with his sword, his his cool soul sword. That was my favorite part. That was Brooke's big highlight this this arc. Um, so other than those guys, uh, we got Sanji who gets to basically meet a lady who he, who kind of likes Sanji. I'm proud of Sanji. He found a girl that likes him back a little bit. Like I'm like, come on, Sanji, get yourself a girl. Like I, a part of me really wants Sanji to get some. You know what I mean? Because maybe he'll calm the f down if he does or he'll die we'll find out but um he meets this girl who is secretly part of doflamingo's crew who also has like a crazy devil fruit ability op as shit like she can see everything that's going on uh, on the island like a certain radius that's pretty damn useful i think her name's violet and i'm just I'm just like, get this chick on the crew, because could you imagine if Luffy and the gang had this girl, Violet, on the crew, someone who can see their surrounding area, a certain range, and like any time, nobody could ever sneak up on the Straw Hats again, ever again. They would always have the advantage going into a battle, because they could be like, okay, he's over there, she's over there, the big army's over there, okay, which, what do you guys want to do? If they have this girl on the crew, not only will Sanji have a girl that actually likes and respects him for his, uh, you know, being a, a protector of women, it actually was a really cool scene. She tries to trick him because she's part of his part of uh, Doflamingo's crew, but she doesn't want to be part of the crew. But then he tell like she like tricks him and acts like she's gonna kill him and steal all his secrets because she can like also by the way she can like probe people's minds with her power and she like tried to check his mind 
for um, information that they needed, like the straw hat laws plan and everything. And all she got, I believe, was... I think it was dirty thoughts because that's all he thinks about or, or something. But she realized that he was truly genuine when he was saying like, hey, you know, you're a beautiful woman, blah, blah, blah. Like she she fell for him a little bit there when she realized something uh, in his head. I can't remember exactly. Maybe because he was so genuine in the way he's talking. She assumed he was lying. I I'm not sure. But he, you know, he's a gullible guy and he almost died because he's afraid to hit a woman. But it worked out in this specific situation. I hope that down the line, this this thing with Zanji, where he doesn't hit women and, and he gets tricked by a woman, I hope it doesn't always work out like this, but it worked out great for Sanji. Like, this was the perfect person to ambush Sanji. She kind of joins him for a, a hot minute. And then... You know, Luffy finds out that uh, Doflamingo has something that he would really like to get his hands on. And it turns out to be Ace's Devil Fruit. What? Ace's Devil Fruit is on Dressrosa. Dressrosa and I literally shit myself. I was just ecstatic. I was like, the fucking Flame Fruit is back. Oh, that was exciting, man. I was really pumped. And he even asks Frankie, like... You want this? Like, it was so funny. He's like, I don't want just anybody to have this this devil fruit. And he looks at Frank. He's like, you want it? Like, maybe think about it for longer than two seconds, Luffy. Maybe somebody... Frankie can already breathe fire, I believe. So, yes, he can. So he doesn't need it. And he, even Frankie's like, I would rather swim. Like, I, I don't think Frankie needs a devil fruit. He'll just build powers onto his body. But you know who does need this fruit in my my opinion Sanji Sanji the man who can somehow light his foot on fire due to friction would be so sick if he could use the flame flame fruit could you imagine if he could do fire and kicks and imagine how easy oh my god imagine how easy it'd be for him not only to light his cigarettes oh He'd be going crazy. Remember when Ace lit his cigarette for him in the in the anime? That shit was awesome. Uh, I, I think that he would be perfect for the flame flame fruit. I don't think Zoro necessarily needs it. And we do need some people on the crew who aren't susceptible to falling into the ocean and dying. But I think Sanji would be perfect for this fruit. I mean, Frankie would be cool too. Can you imagine a cyborg who can turn into fire? But, I don't, and how would that affect his, like, robotic parts? Like, would only he turn into fire and his robotic parts wouldn't? Sanji's the, the best choice, in my opinion. And it would help him with cooking when he's got to light a stove. Ah! He wouldn't even need a stove. He could cook anywhere he wants because he is fire. I would be so pumped if Sanji got that. Uh, but he finds out there's a tournament being held for the Flame Flame Fruit. And he's like, I guess I better join this tournament. Even though that's completely against Law's plan. Law has a plan. And none of his plan really comes to fruition. Luffy really doesn't pay attention to a lick of his plan. He gets the first sentence. Luffy gets the first sentence of a plan. Like, hey bad guy, beat up. He'll go do that. But if you try to explain multiple sentences, he's done. He's gonna just do the first thing you said to do, and then whatever else shiny is in the way towards that goal. <sighs> so, uh, so Luffy goes and joins the tournament. Frankie ends up meeting uh, a toy, uh, a one-legged toy, and I believe they team up. And he explains the history, kind of, of this island, which is insane. Him, he explains the history, and so, and there's also fairies on this island. I don't think they're necessarily called fairies, but the people of this island call them fairies, and they're like these little gnomes, dwarves, and they're running around stealing shit from the island. And the islanders are like, "Oh, it's okay. It was just the fairies. It's like, like when you lose a sock in the in the." in the dryer and you're like oh it, you know it happens you lose a sock but they're like oh don't worry about it but the problem is one of these fairies stole Zoro's sword oh 
his really brand new badass sword from Wano that he got back at Thriller Bark. And he's like, I got to go get that motherfucking sword back. That's one of my best swords. And I haven't even shown exactly what it can do differently than other swords. Um, so he goes chasing after that. So that's the reason he didn't get to be part of the tournament, sadly, because really it led to nothing except him meeting one of these little fairy guys because he does catch him. But it doesn't really lead to him. It just kind of keeps Zoro out of the story for a while. And he does, I mean, not, not doesn't really do anything other than learn about the history of the, the island. So, Luffy got the most time to do shit because he was in the tournament. Uh, we also meet a guy named Bartholomew. I think it was Bo- Bartholomew, but it's not Bartholomew because there's Bartholomew Kuma. It's like Bartholomew, whatever. This weirdo looking dude that I was not a fan of at first. Um, and he comes in and he is a creep. He kind of looks like a kid that dresses, uh, that, that shops at Hot Topic. He's, I I believe he's got tattoos and he's got weird spiked teeth. I'm like, where did you get these body modifications? Um, this dude is, uh, kind of a weirdo in a way. He's willing to just piss he, in the tournament, in his bracket, he peed in, in the water because there's like a moat around the ring and he just pulled his wiener out and just started peeing. No biggie. Don't care. But I, I really love him now. Halfway through this 31 chapters, he turns out to be a major Luffy fan, a straw hat fan. He's like the reader, me, in one piece. Like he's, he, he saw Luffy back at, um, Rogue Town, I believe it was called. Uh, God, I think there's another name for it. The place where, where, uh, Gold D. Roger was executed. He, uh, he, he, he remembers seeing Luffy there way back, way back before they even made it to the Grand Line. They, I mean the Straw Hats, before they even went to the Grand Line, way back when Luffy was about to be executed by Buggy and then got struck by lightning and got away thanks to his daddy and fate and whatnot. Bar- Bartol- Bartolomew was there, people. This guy was there. Oh shit! But he was like a like a, a like a, a a bad guy in his in that area or some shit. Like the leader of a of a of a shitty I don't know a bunch of shit. He was a leader of a bad group down there. But he gave that all up because Luffy inspired him, and I believe he became a pirate because Luffy inspired him to do so, and he's super pumped to see Luffy, and he wanted to join this tournament so he could win the flame fruit so he can give it to Luffy, is what I got from this. But he is great. I I really like him, and I think he's going to lead to something more. I don't know just yet, but he seems like an important character. I think he would be amazing on the Straw Hat crew. He, he like completely geeks out anytime he's near Luffy or a member of the Straw Hat crew. Like he knows all their stats and he probably would collect the trading cards if he could. He probably had, I think, yes, he, he does have all of their wanted posters. He's been keeping all the clippings from the newspapers. He's a total one piece stand. He's a Straw Hat fan and he he just loves Luffy and he can barely talk when he's around him he gets stage fright or whatever you'd call it uh starstruck the dude's great um another character we meet in this tournament again he is my boy Bellamy that's right Bellamy is back and he was not killed I thought he might have been killed by Doflamingo I was wrong. It sure looked like Doflamingo was going to kill him for sucking and for failing to, you know, be cool and losing to Luffy way back before before even Skypea. Uh, man, that's crazy. And now he's back. But he's back and he's in this tournament. And I was so pumped to see Bellamy again because I actually really like his character design. I didn't, I think his powers are cool, the way he uses them. I loved his voice actor. I thought he did a great job. He was a really good villain for what he was. Like, he wasn't meant to be a total challenge in a fight. But man, when he got punched by Luffy, we're always going to remember that. Like, how many times does Luffy win a fight with with a villain with one punch who's like the main villain of that arc? Bellamy 
who, you know, he's no slouch. He, he can probably hold his own with the right opponent. And now he's even stronger. Bellamy looks more jacked than before. You know he's learned some shit. You can tell he's learned his lesson. Like, he even tells Luffy, he's like, I'm not laughing at you anymore. I think that you're a tough SOB. And I'm in this tournament, and I'm going to kick your ass. And I'm going to get that flame, flame fruit. But I don't really care about that, because I already got a devil fruit power. But I'm going to win this tournament, and then Bell, and then Doflamingo is going to make me a captain uh, of his crew. Uh, a general or something. And um, an officer of his crew. And that didn't really turn out well. It, one thing, Bellamy loses his bracket to Bart. I'm going to call him Bart. He loses his, his bracket, and I was so disappointed. I'm like, come on, man. Let Bellamy get farther in this tournament, damn it. I mean, if you're not going to let Zoro be in this tournament, let me see someone I know win. Oh, my God. And then Bellamy loses there, but still respects Luffy because Luffy was there cheering Bellamy on a little bit. Which was kind of crazy. Like, Luffy didn't have to do that. Like, where is Luffy getting... Like, Luffy can tell... Somehow, maybe he can sense it from the way he talked to him, but he can tell that Bellamy's not as bad as he was because Bellamy even says, I went to Skypea, like super pumped. Like, hey man, Luffy, I went to Skypea. It's real. You're right. Dreams can happen. And my dream is to be an officer for Doflamingo because I love him. And like, he's the, as big as a fan of Doflamingo as Bartolomeu was, is for Luffy. And, um, he even says that he went to Skypea and somehow, somehow he got that golden pillar from the Skypea people and brought it to Doflamingo to get back in his good graces is my, is what I got from this story. How did he get this golden pillar? One, did he hurt the people from Skypea? He even, Luffy even asks that question that I was wondering, did you do anything to those people that was bad, basically? And he's like, maybe? Like, he wasn't even trying to act nicer to Luffy, really, other than not making fun of him. Like, and Luffy still cheered him on to do good. Like, that's crazy. That's crazy to me. So Luffy must be able to sense if somebody has, uh, you know, malice in their heart or something, a little bit. He could tell Bellamy wasn't a piece of shit anymore. I really liked Bellamy before, and I like him now. And I hope that he joins the Straw Hat crew. Like, if I had to choose between anybody on this new island of Dressrosa to join the crew, it would be Bellamy, because he's pr pretty pretty great, if you ask me. And I, I think he's a cool character, and he would be a cool villain turned babyface. He, 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 he's got cool powers. He could help. He's a good fighter. He would be useful. Uh, he knows some shiz about Doflamingo, which would help. But I know he's he's going to be something important here because he gets told after losing that he needs to go assassinate Luffy whenever he gets the opportunity, right? It's confusing, too. Like, if he had won the tournament, would he have become an officer for Doflamingo? Or was Doflamingo always planning to kill Bellamy? Because then one of Bellamy's other officers who I I still don't understand, and maybe I will later, shows up and beats the shit out of Bellamy. Almost kills him. Thank God Bartholomew shows up. And I didn't even mention his fruit. Bartholomew's fruit is the, the, the barrier barrier fruit. So he can create invisible shields that so far are impenetrable. What? OP as shiz. I don't know what they're going to do about that. Thank goodness he's not a villain, right? I mean, what are they going to do now? Like, if he was a villain and he could use that shield... I'm, I'm, my assumption is if you have hockey, you can break through it. That's my only assumption. It's got to have a weakness or there's a limit, like a time limit, or it's based on his stamina, kind of like Law's fruit, which we find out. Oh, I really thought that Law's devil fruit was OP as shit at Punk Hazard, especially when he picked up Smoker's ship and like sh cut it in half. But... Turns out Law has a limitation because there's a point in the story where he and Usopp and Robin are together. I like this little trio, by the way. And he they have to fight some like sharks or some shit, some uh, some bull sharks. And he tells uh, he tells Usopp and uh, Robin to take care of it. And he even lets Caesar out of his chains to take care of it because he's like, hey, I got Caesar's heart. What's he going to do? And... Um, he says, I can't use my powers right now because I'm saving my stamina for 
for uh, Doflamingo just in case, which is super smart. But I do like the limitations. I'm a big fan of giving people powers like his like law, but he needs some kind of weakness to make up for it. Like give him all this OP power, but what's that? What's his kryptonite? You know, he's got a he's got a limit, so he's got to win a fight quickly, or he's got to strategically plan his movements when he uses his power. Oh man, his power's nuts. There's a point where he like switches places with I think Sanji or something or say he saves Sanji mid-air. How far out does his range go? Cuz he like teleports basically. He can basically teleport from anywhere he can see, which is insanely awesome. Law is quickly becoming one of my favorite characters that isn't a straw hat. Whew. Oh man. Uh so Luffy enters the tournament, and his fight was insane. He ends up fighting this, like, king from another... Or a pirate from the past. This old man with a, a weird-shaped head who hates his grandpa, Garp. Oh, yeah, by the way, Luffy's in disguise this whole time. He's Lucy, which was hilarious. So he's Lucy. The crowd loves him. I, I don't know what's going on. Luffy doesn't even care about using his stretching abilities. It looks like he was using all of his powers in this tournament. So it's like, as soon as you see him stretch a little bit, you go, oh, that's obviously Luffy, because Luffy can stretch. Even Bellamy recognized Luffy immediately. He's like, you don't think I recognize you? You beat the shit out of me with one punch. Bellamy recognizes him. Uh, you know what's interesting? Bellamy didn't immediately go tell on Luffy. I, I, mean, I mean, I think Doflamingo already knew that Luffy was there. But I wonder if Bellamy, once he realized that Luffy was there, he was like, you know what? I respect him. I'm not going to go tell on him. I'm just going to kick his ass in this tournament. Uh, because he could have just went and told on him, but instead he didn't, which I thought was pretty cool. Bellamy's a cool dude, and I think he should join the crew. Well, uh, Usopp and Robin end up getting abducted by a shit ton of those fairies before they can even help Law with the, the trade-off with Caesar and Do Doflamingo. By the way, Doflamingo didn't actually leave the the uh, Shishibukai. He did not leave the warlords, and he is not still king of Desterosa, which is a whole ordeal. I really can't wait to get Doflamingo's true backstory. Oh! It's going to be so exciting. I'm so pumped, man. This this arc has got me so pumped. Like, I am more pumped for this than I was for all of Alabasta. Like, because I know that we're going to get a sick backstory for him. And if we don't, I'm going to be very disappointed. Because we find out that Doflamingo's a damn celestial dragon. Or he was. He still is. And that's the reason he was able to fake the newspaper shit. Like, he was able to make that work and still be a Shishibukai and shit. I'm like, what is happening? This guy's a fucking celestial dragon. For a little bit there, I was like, where did these celestial dragons come from? But they're the descendants of the kings, is what I got from the story. They're the descendants of the 20 kings, except one of the 20, uh, Alabasta Kingdom, uh, they stayed behind back at Alabasta. Uh, Vivi's uh, family stayed behind. So 19 different kings uh, went to this, this place where they live above uh, Fishman Island. And Doflamingo left. Doflamingo's family, though, were originally kings of Dressarosa. But the kings all left to this, like, paradise where they all live and let other people take over and become kings. And the person who took over was a great king who actually liked the, the people, actually liked him. And he never caused war, never happened while he and his, you know, his family were in charge. Turns out, uh, Doflamingo shows up one day and he says, Hey man, I'm Doflamingo. And uh, this is my kingdom, technically through uh, blood. I, my, my, uh, my father's father's father was the king here. Back in the void century or some shiz. Uh, I don't know for sure. But he was somewhat... He's related to the original king of this island. And he says, I claim this island unless you can pay me a shiz ton of money. The dude collects a bunch of money from his people. And I'm like, what is going on? Uh, but they, they're willing to give him the money. They trust him. He's not allowed to even tell them that uh, Doflamingo's there. 
Then Doflamingo uses his crazy devil fruit string string fruit ability to control the king who and then slaughters a bunch of his people and and the people are like why are you doing this king like they don't question it at all. they're like what what's happening like they don't think something's weird here he went from being a perfect king to now to now slaughtering his people <laughs> I, I, I myself was a little thrown off. I was like, you guys are really going to turn on him? And then Doflamingo pretended, you know, to save the day. Kind of like how Crocodile, basically the same thing Crocodile did back at Alabasta to get favor from the people of Alabasta. So that that's kind of wild. It is kind of reminiscent of that. You kind of, I'm, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, we get to see Crocodile in this arc. Uh, it, oh! shit there's still a lot of chapters to go people I, we could see crocodile that would pump me up i'm super into crocodile right now i actually in order to really dope crocodile figure for my collection oh by the way i got a luffy tattoo as well uh maybe i'll throw it into this video or a future video it's pretty dope um so uh like i was saying nami or nico robin and usopp get abducted by fairies who think that usopp is a is related to Nolan the Liar connecting to Skypea here. Things are connecting all over the place. Talk about string string fruit, huh? Um, and so they start calling him Uso Land and Nico Rob Nico Land. They just start. And he, they think that he's the leader. He uses his lies to you know get them on in their side and whatnot. There's this whole scene where Nico Robin's all tied up by the by the little people and they're like inside of her cleavage and stuff. It is it's funny. It was funny. But um yeah they, they get the they join forces with these little guys and they want to help them out. Frankie talks to the toy soldier guy who turns out to be Rebecca's father. By the way, I haven't even mentioned the fact that there's a bunch of living toys on this island who were turned into toys by uh, another devil fruit user who, who like has the hobby hobby fruit who works for Doflamingo, who's like a little kid who turned anybody who ever opposed uh, Doflamingo on this island into toys. And once they're turned into toys, nobody remembers them. In any way, shape, or form. Even if you were, they were your father, they don't remember you. Like, they're, they're like, where's your dad? Like, oh, I don't have a dad. Like, it, their memory is wiped of their father. It, that gets turned into, like, a toy. Which is insane to me. Uh, and it turns out this little toy... And they remember themselves being human, which is even worse. This is the darkest devil fruit thing I've seen in this series. And I really hope they find this little little girl or little boy who's doing this and they cut their head off because this devil fruit shouldn't exist because it is just dangerous as fuck. I hope we find out that this devil fruit has a crazy weakness and it just takes like knocking this kid silly to turn everybody back. But it's, ins oh my god, that's horrifying. This is some Black Mirror shit. Like, your family forgets you, and you're, like, frozen in time as a toy. Ah! Ah! And forced to work in, like, a toy shop and shit, and toys can't live with humans. This is this whole ordeal, and he takes care of his daughter, Rebecca, who doesn't even recognize him because he's a toy and she doesn't remember him. Woo! Ah! This whole thing is crazy! Um, yeah, Luffy has a crazy fight, right? With uh, a dude that hates Garp. I didn't even get into all that yet. And this dude has a treasure that's hidden underneath an ice sheet. Is what I got from this. And Garp punched this dude in the head so hard. Because Garp has the punch. Has a crazy punch. I love Garp. I hope we get to see him more. Because I think he is one of the most badass grandpas in all of anime. And he punches this dude in the head. Who used to have a cone head. And made, it, made his head normal kind of. And now this guy had used to have like the hardest head in the world. And he was the only one who could like unveil his treasure that he collected over years. Probably 20 years minimum collected this money that was going to be his and his family's. But he's the only one that can get to it because he can break this ice sheet with his pointy head. But once Garp punched his head in, he was unable to retrieve his gold. I think it's kind of dumb. But 
I'm okay with it. The whole idea. I'm like, if... I mean, Garp might be able to punch this ice. I, I mean, somebody can probably... I bet Luffy could find a way to get through this ice, or, or this this issue. I, I feel it. I feel it in my bones. There's somebody out there. I bet Zoro could cut through that shit. He's not the only one. Either way, he and Luffy have one of the craziest fights. Oh, my God. It really hypes up Conqueror's Hockey. Oh my god, it was so cool. Their fight was so much fun in the manga. I was having a good time reading it. I couldn't stop turning the pages. I was like, oh my god, this fight is epic. The best fight so far of this arc, in my opinion. And um, Luffy ends up punching him so hard in the head that his head becomes a cone again. Logic, right? Um, And then he forgives him, even though he swore... He swore to to ca- kill or maim Garp's children's children. Like that's what a what a swear. <laughs> He's like, if only I knew Dragon existed, I would have got him years ago. I have a feeling Dragon would whoop this guy's ass. Uh, either way, it was a great fight with this old man, uh, and that was interesting. I I don't know if this old man's gonna lead to anything later, but maybe it's One Piece. There's another thing I did not even bring up yet. <laughs> uh, Burgess of the Blackbeard crew is here as well in this tournament and actually wins the Block A bracket or t- Battle Royal. Burgess is here and he wants to collect the flame fruit that, because, oh my god, Blackbeard wants him to become, uh, oh, I have a feeling he might get it because Blackbeard was like, I want somebody like Ace on my crew, but Ace denied me. So Burgess, my right hand man, is gonna become the flame flame fruit guy. And I was just like, what? Burgess is here. I'm like pumped because I wanted to see Burgess and Luffy go head to head. Cause then it will kind of tell me like how strong Blackbeard is compared kind of. Like if Burgess gives Luffy some trouble then Luffy doesn't stand a chance. But if Luffy's able to crush him, then no big deal, right? Right? I don't know. I don't know. It is interesting. Like, if Burgess is an easy beat, like, if he's beaten too easily, then what does that say about Blackbeard's crew? It, like, really? I don't think he's been technically Blackbeard's number one guy, but he's got to be up there, right? He he was part of his original crew. Like, he's got to have some power behind him. It's cool, though. He's got his crew out there looking for devil fruits. There's also a part where he's like... He references Okiji... Aokiji... To Blackbeard on the phone. Uh, on his snail phone. It, it's pretty intense what's going on now. There's a lot of factors happening. There's... Uh, I Also, I think we found out that... Uh, uh, Buggy the Clown is a warlord, people. Buggy the Clown, the man, the epic legend Buggy, is a warlord. And it's all because of his, uh, his boistering, his boistering, uh, during Marine Ford on, on camera, I believe. And his crew probably telling everybody how badass he is. And it got back to the, to the Marines and they're like, well, who should we have become a Shishi Bukai? Well, this guy used to be on Shanks' crew, so he's got to be on Shanks' level, right? I love that. I absolutely love that. He, no, he wasn't on Shanks' crew. Sorry, let me let me correct that. He was on Goldie Rogers' crew, people! And now he's a fucking... He's a warlord of the sea! That's insane! He's on the same level as Boa Hancock, Doflamingo, Crocodile was. He's like He's, he's in the same level as Barth- Bartholomew Kuma. I'm really interested to see what Buggy is up to. and But we got a hint. We know he's a warlord now. What's that going to mean? I mean, warlord status really has kind of lost its meaning in a way because of the way that Crocodile kind of abused it. Uh, Law abused it. Boa Hancock abuses it. Mihawk kind of abuses it. Not a lot of these warlords... I mean, Bartholomew Kuma abused it. Like, not... Very rare do you get a good warlord that's gonna listen. Like, rare. It's not a good system, Marines. I'm saying that right here, right now. Let's have the bad guys regulate the bad guys. Oh my god, there's even a part... Because there's also an admiral on this island, by the way, who's blind. Uh, I cannot remember. Fuji 
Tora or something, and he he's pretty badass, by the way. Can somebody please explain to me in the comments down below what Fuji Tora's uh, Devil Fruit ability is? Because out of nowhere, like meteors and shit start falling from the sky. I, I is he got the meteor meteor fruit? Please let me know, because I don't understand just yet. They haven't explained it. They've shown it, but I don't really understand it yet. Is it like an earthquake thing? No, it can't be, because that's the quick, quick fruit. It's got to be like the meteor, meteor fruit. That's my guess. Please let me know if I'm right down below in the comments. And also, while we're here, please subscribe. Please tell your friends. This is more fanime, people. And I want more fanime to reach 1,000 subscribers before, before the end of 2022. And I believe we can do this. Please tell people to subscribe to more fanime. They will not be disappointed. I put up two videos a week every week, Mondays and Thursdays. And, you know, sometimes that can change based on, you know, holidays or whatnot, but more, than, more likely than not, Mondays and Tuesdays, Thursdays, you're getting a video from more fanime. And I'm going to talk about anime. Uh, it might be One Piece. It usually is lately, but I, it changes depending on what I'm reading or what I'm thinking about. I love anime and I love ideas. Give me ideas. Give me questions down below. I'd love to answer them. Okay. Back to the story. Luffy ends up winning his bracket. Burgess wins his bracket. Uh, Bartholomew wins his bracket. And uh, we're currently in the last bracket with Rebecca, who I'm assuming is going to win her bracket. Uh, if, you had to, if I had to guess, it's Burgess is probably going to win this tournament and get the Flame Flame Fruit. That's my, my prediction. At the, uh, that's my prediction. We haven't even talked about Law dealing with Doflamingo. By the way, Doflamingo has the string string fruit, and he can fly because he can like attach his little team invisible strings that are a part of his fingers to clouds, which is insane in the membrane, people. And he not only has the string string fruit, he also can control people with it that we've seen before. For the longest time, I thought that he uh, had like a puppet master type fruit, devil fruit ability. It really reminded me of Konkuro from Naruto. Please, I mean, you guys, if you've watched Naruto, you know what I mean. Like, I thought maybe he controlled people like a puppet. Like, uh, what are those things called? Um, it starts with an M. Uh, and he, he controls people. He did it to Juzo, the diamond guy, back at Marine Ford. He's done it before to other Marines. And he just has fun controlling people like puppets. And it makes a lot of sense because he, he's, uh, you know, he's royalty. He was a celestial dragon. He probably fucked with real people all the time. I would love to see... I cannot wait to see his backstory. Like, was he in one of those weird spacesuits with the bubble over his head? Like, just, what? Like, he wasn't just an aristocrat. No. He was a celestial dragon. Oh, my God. How does the government even allow him to fight? Like, if you touch him, do you go to jail? Like, geez, he's a celestial dragon. He's got the blood of the kings in him. You can't touch him. But he, he became a pirate. And not only that, he became a Shishibukai. And not only that, he became the king of Destro Dressrosa for the last 10 years. What is happening? This dude is a G. He, he is easily in the running for the best villain in One Piece so far. Uh, based on feats alone. This guy is big brain here, man. Doflamingo has been plotted out since uh, after Alabasta. Like, this dude has... Oda has been waiting to unleash this guy. He's had this guy's backstory, his gimmick, ready from the get-go. Oda has known what he's wanted to do with, with Doflamingo from the start. And you can feel it. It bleeds off the page. And it gets me so hyped. Because I can't wait to see this guy go up full out with Luffy and Law. Oh, my God. This guy is insane, man. Uh, Caesar, he wants to get Caesar back because he creates the, 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 the stuff, the smile, the fake devil fruits, the zone fruits, which are insane. I, I still don't understand that whole concept because if, if he controls the... Uh, if he can make these zone devil fruits, can he make one, like, an army of dragons? Like, he, because he made the devil fruit that, uh, that Momo ate 
Like, does does Momo, is he the only one that has this dragon dragon fruit? Or can he make multiple? Or can he only make one of each type? And does that mean there is another version of it? Like, can he create a human human fruit? Even though Chopper already has it? He must be able to. If he can create zone devil fruits, he must be able to make multiple copies of different, uh, of the same ones. Like a bunch of hippo devil fruits. I would not be surprised. Listen to me here and now. I would not be surprised if the jailers back at Impel Down turned out to be using fake devil fruit uh, abilities. The ones that were like animal creature things that were like giant and monstrous, but they didn't turn back into humans at any point. Uh, they just seemed like they were a little off. Like they didn't seem like regular zone fruits. The ones that Luffy fought at the, at the jail, Impel Down. That's just a, a prediction, people. I have no idea. Shit's going crazy, and I'm so pumped. This is only the first 31 chapters. Um, one of my favorite parts of this arc was Sanji, who finds out that Nami and the crew is in danger because he find, thinks because he's with that uh, Vic, uh, Victoria girl. Uh, or Violet Girl, who's just like, hey, your friends are in danger. I can sense it with my devil fruit power. He skywalks, like, flies over to where the crew is, uh, and he attacks Doflamingo head on without any... Not even blinking. Like, he's ready to take on uh, a warlord. Not any warlord. Probably the strongest warlord that we know of, except for Hawkeye Miha. And he comes in with a kick to Doflamingo. And even Doflamingo was like, whoa, you're Black Lake Sanji? Sanji? Man, that was a hell of a kick. Congrats, you're actually not uh, weak. Like, he kind of congrat gave, uh, you know, Sanji some, uh, some props for coming in with that kick. That hot kick. Oh my god, I can only imagine just seeing Sanji fly, uh, air walk across the sky directly at Doflamingo, and I cannot wait to see that in the anime version, because I know it's going to be hype. He kicks him as hard as he can, and before Doflamingo can kill him, Law switches places with like a piece of wood or some shit, and then saves Sanji, teleports Sanji out of there. Thank God Law was there. And then he tells the crew, he, which something he should have told the crew from the get-go, hey, uh, Doflamingo uses clouds to fly with his string string fruit. Don't sail underneath clouds and he can't get to you unless he uses a boat. Like, come on, tell them this information. Don't withhold this information. Obviously, Law has a very big past with Doflamingo, and I cannot wait to see what that is. Oh! Oh, and by the way, the very end of the last chapter, chapter 731, uh, obviously Sabo is here. Uh, obviously. Like, they th they th show the three sake cups. Uh, Luffy thought he was dead. And he wants to avenge uh, Ace, and he doesn't. He also doesn't want anybody else to have the Devil Fruit. Uh, he doesn't. Definitely doesn't want any bad people to have it. And he ends up. Um, I don't know. He ends up taking care of the whole flame flame fruit thing because Luffy entering the tournament really didn't lead to Luffy actually finishing the tournament, which is kind of a cool thing, I guess. I mean, it's cool. I'm happy that Luffy isn't just going to win this tournament, but. He leaves the tournament with Zoro, who really did nothing. There was a really funny part where Zoro was actually watching the tournament on TV and, like, drinking beer. And he's like, get him, Luffy! I thought that was awesome. He was, like, watching pay-per-view. He's like, yeah, I wish I was in this tournament, you asshole! Uh, man, I, it makes me sad, because I have a feeling that we'll never see another tournament again in the series. I could be completely wrong, but fingers crossed that, you know, that I'm not. I, I want... I want to see a tournament involving more of the Straw Hats. I don't necessarily want the Straw Hats to fight each other. It's a good reason to fight each other without having to be in in an actual fight emotionally. It would be kind of cool to see uh, Sanji and Zoro go head, out, head on. But it, I don't know. I, I just think that a, a real tournament... One-on-one -on -one bracket style tournament would be really fun. I mean, I know it's not Oda's style. I know it's overplayed, but I I would really like to see a real tournament. So I, I I'm excited. We're we're gonna see Sabo enter this tournament. 
We're going to see Burgess kick some. We still haven't really seen what Burgess can do, so I'm excited to see what he can do. Uh, Zoro kind of clashes with Fujitoro uh, guy, who's a swordsman as well. I cannot wait to see that fight. Um, Usopp is leading the, the fairies, because Uso land. Frankie's a part of it. He, he hasn't really done a whole lot this arc yet either, but he's still there. Uh, Big Mom ship shows up out of nowhere. Oh my god, I didn't even mention Big Mom ship shows up at the very end, and it starts attacking the, the Thousand Sunny, which has Sanji, not, Nico Robin, Chopper, Brooke, I, and Caesar and Momo on it. And Luffy tells them, go ahead and go to Zoo, the next island, please. Go to the next island, and we will deal with all these problems when you guys go there, because we need to stay here and deal with Doflamingo. I know the plan wasn't originally to deal with Doflamingo head on, but he's a piece of shit, and he's been fucking with these people for far too long. So half the crew, literally half the crew, is going to Zoo Island, Z-O-U, I believe, Zoo, Zo, and is it Zoo or Zo? Please help me out in the comments. And the rest of the crew is on the island, uh, Rest Rosa, and they're going to go to war! I'm really disappointed that Sanji isn't going to be part of the war, though, man! I hope Sanji gets something epic to do for the next, uh, 70 chapters. Like, I, he better get something cool to do. But Sanji basically, before the 31 chapters end, Sanji asked Luffy, Hey, can I attack Big Mom's ship? Which was super dope to see them still treat Luffy like the motherfucking captain he is. And Luffy's like, yeah, I already started a, a fight with Big Mom anyway. Go for it. Kick some ash. Take some names. I thought that was dope that Sanji was willing to ask Luffy first. Um, I hope that Sanji doesn't, like, get captured by Big Mom's crew. I hope it's just Sanji whooping their asses. Like, I hope Big Mom's not even on the ship. They haven't shown her yet. So, I'm assuming she's not, because it would be a hell of a deal to have an emperor of the sea also involved in this giant arc when we're already dealing with Doflamingo and his crew, which we haven't really got to meet all the way yet, who have some OP powers, who all serve him, who used to, he used to be a celestial dragon. Oh my god, this backstory is going to be insane. I cannot wait to hear about it. So, this has been more Fanime. What did you think of my review of Dressarosa? I know it was all over the place, but the arc was all over the place. There were so many things Oda covered, and I think I hit all the, the big moments, the big epic things that you need to remember after reading these first 31 chapters. Sabo's back. Uh, Burgess is here. I hope we get to see Crocodile. Fingers crossed. I'm so pumped, man. This is exactly what I was expecting from the New World, this arc. And it really even makes Punk Hazard better, better because it set up this arc. Oh, I'm pumped, and I cannot wait. wait. I'm going to go right into the next few chapters right now. And uh, please comment down below, please share, and please subscribe yet again. I will ask that over and over and over again. Subscribe, and share it with your friends. I, Mr. Morfetto. Here at Morfanime, we'll talk to you later.